and some more drama in the Bcash FS and Linux world this week as a new patch series submitted by Kent Overstreet has caused some back and forth between Linus and Kent. We're going to be getting into this, but for those of you who are unaware of what BcacheFS is, it's the cow file system for Linux that won't eat your data. And specifically, when it says won't eat your data, this is actually what the patch addresses as an incident happened recently that I covered, we'll be getting into, that actually ate a person's data during a file system check process. And this specific patch has something to do with disaster recovery. Regardless, BcacheFS is an advanced new file system for Linux with an emphasis on reliability and robustness and a complete set of features that one would expect from a modern file system. Here it touts cow beyond right cow, just like ZFS and BTRFS or ButterFS. It has full data and metadata checksumming, can handle multiple devices, replication. It's scalable over 100 plus terabytes and expected to scale far higher, has high performance and low tail latency and already working and stable. This should be in quotes as it is not considered stable, at least as far as the kernel is concerned. We'll be getting into some of this, but I want to talk about some data corruption that actually happened. Remember a moment ago, it was touted that it is stable and doesn't lose your data. Well, we had an issue or incident of some data corruption, which shouldn't happen, reported by user Kamura Han. If you're interested in this, I have a whole different video on it that goes into depth on what actually happened, the back and forth, but the too long don't read here is a user stress tested BcacheFS on Linux kernel 6.12 and saw silent data corruption when copying files inside of the, an ext4 formatted image stored on the BcacheFS volume. Diff showed many mismatches and FS check reported broken back pointers. The response by Kent was that he labeled 6.12 effectively end of life and urged upgrading to 6.15 or above, even though the user was able to reproduce the issue all the way up to 6.14. The root cause here was a bug could zero out the inodes link count, causing FS check to delete live data. So there are of course fixes for more cautious repair logic that landed because of this told there's a small merge conflict due to the time remaining. The relevant code has been deleted here. This is from Kent to Linus and shows off the following commits and changes and the updates here that were made for 6.16 part two, more stack usage improvements to define classes for some commonly used types and convert most RCU read lock uses to the new lock guards. New introspection, super block error counters are now available in system file system, new trace points with error throw, and they repaired the check fix pointers that can help repair the B tree node roots. We can now repair when we've had somehow ended up with the journal using a super block bucket and reverted some leftover and aborted directory I size features and added a repair code. Some user space programs, e.g. SSHFS, were getting confused. And now we get a lengthy insight as basically debugging the issue took longer than necessary. So it didn't meet the merge window for 6.16 because some users ignored release notes and they ran the FS check dash Y command, which is the auto fix, which led to avoidable as named here data loss. Instead, they should have dry ran it in the dry run mode to investigate first. Only errors marked auto fix are safe to repair automatically. BcacheFS is still experimental labeled in here. I don't like the way that Kent blames the user here going as far as to say file system check dash Y on an experimental file system is playing with fire. Sometimes it feels like they're not picking a lane. Regardless, this project currently relies heavily on user bugs to report it since there's no telemetry, which is great. Without feedback, it's hard to catch real world issues. Despite this incident, BcacheFS previously had a solid data loss record. The maintainer actually spent their weekend trying to recover that data for the user who actually had no backups and ran the file system check yes option. Either way, Kent says this is a community effort. I wouldn't be able to get this done without the help of all the people QAing and providing excellent bug reports and feedback based on real world usage. But please don't ignore advice and expect me to pick up the pieces. Fair, but at the same point, why should people use your file system if it's not safe to use and could lead to data corruption? Regardless, we're going to get into Linus's response here. But before before we do, make sure to smash that like button for me and go down, subscribe below. You wouldn't want to miss another video like this. It never seems to be good between these two, as this is where the problem started. BcacheFS decided to make fixes for kernel release 6.16 RC3. Lots of small repair fixes, primarily subvolume loop directory, fixing that few 6.16 regressions that we talked about just a moment ago, and a new option entirely, a tool called Journal Rewind that lets the entire file system be reset to an earlier point in time. 
Very good, but a bit too late, seemingly in Linus's mind, as Linus had a bone to pick with the following from Kent. New option, journal rewind. This lets the entire file system be reset to an earlier point in time. Note that this is not only a disaster recovery tool, and right now there are major caveats to using it. Discard should be disabled in particular, but it successfully restored the file system of one of the users who was a bit by the sub volume deletion bug and didn't have backups. I'll likely be making some changes to discard path in the future to make this a reliable recovery tool. Linus's reply here is you seem to have forgotten what the point of the merge window was again. We don't start adding new features just because you found other bugs. I remain steadfastly convinced that anybody who uses bcache.fs is expecting it to be experimental. They had better make the dash RC fixes be pure fixes. Signed off Linus. The point here is Linus is trying to remind Ken and everyone that the merge window is for new features, not for release candidate phase starts. Only bug fixes should be submitted, no new features like Journal Rewind. It wasn't even the patches that Kent was trying to put in, but it's the new tool that Kent is trying to include. Linus is frustrated that Kent keeps breaking this rule, especially by justifying new features as responses to bugs. Linus affirms that bcache.fs is still experimental and it should be treated that way. Bottom line, no new features after a new merge window. Stick to bug fixes during the release candidate cycles and Bcache FS is not production ready. Users should heed the warning and the risks that are associated with using an experimental file system. All good points, but it doesn't stop there. As Kent replies and users actually get involved, Let's read some of that, but before we do, if you want to level up your Linux experience today, check out my checklist, cheat sheet, and mind map, also now available with flashcards, all at SavvyNick.com. This is how Kent responds to everything. Honestly, most of the people using bcache.fs from what I've seen just want something that works. There's a lot of people who've been burned by butterfs. I've even been seeing more and more people in recent discussions talking about unrecoverable file systems with ZFS. This is kind of typical of Kent putting down other file systems in an argument that his is somehow better. No surprise there. The last one has been a surprise to me. And I don't think it's anything to do with the quality of the code, but it's honestly should serve as a wake up call to as to how much is falling through the cracks and how badly we've been failing. There are still a lot of people who don't want to move off of ext4 and I can't really blame them. If you go looking, you won't find those stories about bcache.fs except for me when I'm telling people what to watch out for. And that's because of a lot of hard work and because I'm dead set on not repeating past mistakes, I actively hunt down bugs and I frequently tell people, I don't care if you think it's a hardware issue or a PEBCAC, which stands for problem exists between chair and keyboard, AKA user error. It's the file system's job to not lose data, get me the info I need and I'll get it sorted and get it working again. Kind of talking out of both ends here, just because just in the previous couple of replies where we read that Kent warned the users that it's not his job to get your data back and then saying right here, it's the file system's job not to lose your data. Either way, whatever. That's the goal here, delivering something that users can trust and rely on. I'm not seeing that you, talking to Linus, get that. Here we have Martin step in, who is a longtime Linux user and mailing list participant, often involved in file system discussions, not a maintainer, but a well-respected and experienced user. What does Martin say? He says that Kent seems to ignore and stretch the kernel rules by fitting his own goals, especially regarding what counts as a fix, which is labeled here. Martin then urges Kent to stop unilaterally breaking rules and instead formally propose changes at development meetings. And he notes this pattern of behavior has been happening repeatedly and warns it will lead into an endless loop of conflict, if not resolved constructively as it says here. And then he also pushes back on Kent's implementation that other file systems, like I said a moment ago, XFS, and BTRFS or ButterFS don't care about data, saying that there's many examples of devs helping users recover lost data. And just following up with the moment I saw your merge request, I would have been very surprised if Linus would have pulled it. As we still haven't heard from Linus yet, but we do hear from Jerome, who is a BcacheF user and has been following this discussion. This is about the last part of the entire conversation, and they want to share their perspective on the current state of the file system and the path forward. There's a lot here, so I'm going to break this down for us as there's a lot to read, and I already went through all of this. The key takeaways here are one, real world use cases. As the user talks about running bcache.fs on backup staging servers with snapshots, replication, and claims that the strengths of bcache.fs are seamless cache device integration, flexible per folder compression, replication, and quick recovery after power cuts, surviving six drive failure with minimal loss. Jerome claims that Kent is very responsive and many bug fixes are fastly done after user reports. The trouble spots 
seem to occur when combining advanced features like snapshots, snapshot operations, ref link, no cal, heavy parallel workloads, and case folding, which often lead to lockups or require offline file system checks. These parts feel experimental, but aren't clearly labeled as such. And the main request here is to gate unstable features behind explicit experimental flags and keep the core stable path bug fix only. So the overall goal of the user is just to say, protect bcachefs from being booted out of the main line by avoiding big feature as is fixes and patches in the dash RC releases. So we can give users a clear roadmap of what's safe versus being edge. A very wise and well thought out response to this whole thing, as even the users are noting that there's tension going on between Kent and the Linux kernel. This isn't the first time that issues have happened such as merging into the Linux 6.7 in January 2024, bcachefs was being treated as stable. And Linus pointed out then that if you thought bcachefs was stable already, I have a bridge to sell you. And then in 2024, a huge code of conduct committee dispute forced temporary suspension of Kent's contributions as even users of the bcachefs system are reinforcing Linus's core point. The new and complex features should not be rushed into stable release cycles, especially in RC release candidate stages. Kent does reply to the user, thanks for the report and thanks the community. As he acknowledges the fact that bcachefs is not just his project, but one powered by active, patient and committed users. And what's great is Kent has a thoughtful response to multiple sections of this user's insights, including agreeing with gating experimental features and explaining why feature development still has to happen in the release candidate. As Kent wants to provide clarity, transparency, and a roadmap to his users, as this is a very friendly reply to the user, but still stands weak on the process, discipline, and respecting the kernel rules as Linus wants to enforce them. It definitely reinforces the credibility as a maintainer, but it seems like bcachefs needs better infrastructure like those gated feature flags or backporting strategies before getting treated as something stable in the main line. Well, there's been no response from Linus at this point. If there is, I'm gonna do another video, but what do you think about the overall stance from Linus? And how can experimental subsystems like bcachefs continue to evolve rapidly and remain responsive to the user needs and respect the stability guarantee that the Linux merge process undeniably requests? I'm interested to hear from you in the comment section below. Also, if you've made it to the end of the video, you're a true fan, make sure to smash that like button for me and subscribe below if you haven't already. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.